Hello friends, let us discuss Simon Armitage and his poems that we have chosen for this lecture. First, we will see the historical and literary context, then see the life of Simon Armitage briefly, then analyze two of his poems, two of his well known poems Zoom and The Shout and then after our analysis we will conclude our presentation. Let us see the historical context first. We start with a beautiful quotation from Armitage's interview. So, it is probably Margaret Thatcher's fault that I am a poet. Armitage did not get a job and so he started writing poems that is how he mentions it. Tony Blair was the Labour Prime Minister of England from 1997 to 2004. At this time powers were given to Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland to have their own assemblies, to have their own parliaments. Of course, under this larger administration of UK and this was a time when Britain lost its the last colonial post Hong Kong in 1999. We also have political developments with Brexit which started in 2016 and just recently ended in 2020 started by Theresa May and ended by Boris Johnson. We have Yorkshire which is a part of England located in the north and that north is completely industrialized and this is in contrast to south which is not that much industrialized. This northern part is the home to kitchen sink drama and many other pop cultures which have come into Britain. Now, let us see the poetry scenario in the literary context. We are dealing with Simon Armitage who was born in the second part of 20th century. So, we will see the post 1950 poetry scenario. We have the movement poets through Philip Larkin, then the group poets by Philip Hobsbawm and then we have Alvarez group poets through Ted Hughes and then we have popular poets like John Betjeman and Roger McGaugh. We also have many contemporary poets like Andrew Motion, Carol Ann Duffy, Pam Ayers, Imtiaz Darker with some Indian connection and then we have Jamie McKendrick and lastly Jeremy Noel Todd. At this time we also have some poets who work collaboratively particularly with Simon Armitage that is one is Glenn Maxwell another is Ian Gregson. We also have some special feature of poetry at this time poetry and music came together in performances. Remember our discussion on Liverpool poets we have one here Roger McCock and in the same way Simon Armitage also participates in a rock band and sings and performs his poetry. Let us see Simon Armitage. He is a current poet laureate of England after Carol and Duffy in 2019. He is basically a student of geography and social work. Then he became a poet of the north like Ted Hughes both are Yorkshire poets. He first published four volumes of poetry and then left his own job as a probation officer to pursue poetry for the sake of poetry. Later on after his growth as a poet he was appointed as professor of poetry at Oxford, Leeds and Sheffield universities. He is a poet who participates in different kinds of creative activities in different media like radio, TV, film, music bands, even trekking, travel and yet he finds time to write poems about several issues facing humanity including the environment and social class differences. He is also a keen translator of Middle English poems and Greek drama. He has translated Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. We have two famous poems from Simon Armitage, they are Zoom and 
shout. In one of his interviews, he tells us how he got into poetry. He was a student in college, he would not attend classes very attentively, but then one day when poetry was discussed, he woke up suddenly and listened to words and he recalls this power of poetry and speak about this inspiration to his interviewers Ronch and Whedon. I was suddenly becoming alert to the idea that there are only 26 letters in the alphabet, just black shapes against a white background, but if you can put them in the right order then you can make incredible things happen in somebody else's head as it happened in the case of Simon Arbitrage in the class. In complete silence across hundreds of miles, across thousands of years that struck me there and then as an act of primitive magic. I still feel that sometimes when I encounter very powerful work, words are magic, words have a great power. This is what Simon Armitage shares with us. I too when I was a student thought about these 26 letters. In India, students have difficulty in learning English or they say they have difficulty with learning English. But I asked myself, how can a language with just 26 letters be so difficult for us to learn? My own mother tongue has 247 letters which I learnt effortlessly. Why is this 26 letters are problematic for me or me? any other uh, learner in our country and here we can see Simon Armitage born in England having English as a mother tongue. He got this inspiration to write poetry although he did not have any poetry background. His father was less than middle class working person and he comes from a middle class family and he got this inspiration and he has come to this level of writing poems and becoming a popular poet among the people. We have two poems, one is Zoom, it is a 29 line 3 stanza free verse. It telescopes a macroscopic and microscopic view of the town Armitage has lived in. And the next poem The Shout is a 20 line free verse in 6 tercets and a couplet at the end. It poignantly projects the power of the human voice even after death which can be heard in distant space and time. And this second poem the shout has some relevance to the interview excerpt that we discussed. Zoom again we are not able to quote the entire poem, we will have some extracts and then some summaries of the omitted passages. For the original poem, please go to Poetry Foundation or to our text. Let us begin. It begins as a house and end terrace in this case, but it will not stop there. Soon it is an avenue which cambers arrogantly past the mechanics institute. Then the view, the telescopic view, the view covers the main road, the four commercial banks, a daily newspaper and a football team and then pushes off to another direction. Then the view goes beyond view, city, nation, hemisphere, universe hammering out in all directions until suddenly mercifully it is drawn aside through the eye of a black hole. And reaches a nearby galaxy becoming smaller than a billiard ball, but heavier than Satan. So, we have something like a camera and it moves from one place to another and after covering some of the local locations, it moves on to hemisphere, universe hammering out in all directions, but suddenly it comes back after reaching the black hole. Simon Armitage is an interesting poet, an excellent poet. We have highlighted that through the red color we have, hemisphere, universe hammering out in all directions until suddenly. Within one line, we have multisyllabic words or polysyllabic words, each having three syllables, hemisphere, universe hammering directions suddenly, all of them come together. This is something strange by which our poet achieves some poetic effect. Next 
the speaker of the poem says that the people bother him to know what the object was, what is a zooming or what is that object it tries to capture. People ask him, so he answers and asks what is this, this that is so small and so very smooth, but whose mass is greater than the ringed planet. It is just words I assure them, but they will not have it. When the poet or the speaker says it is just words, ringed planet, heavier planet, this heavy and uh, light difference, it is not there, it does not matter, but people do not believe him. We have the thematic contrast between zoom in and zoom out, camera lens and the human eye, territory and space that is earth and then the extraterrestrial space, houses, streets on the ground to planets and black hole in space, centrifugal movement and centripetal movement, we have microcosm and macrocosm, words and the worlds or things, arrogance and humility, left and right, inclusion and exclusion, commerce, media, sports, these are included and many other things are excluded. That is why we have highlighted this and also we want to see the contrast between see and show and then unsee and hide. If you do not see, you simply hide, you do not bring it to the public view. Several poetic devices are found in this poem, metaphor of zooming in and zooming out that is found in the title itself. Then we have this metaphor of watching and recording through this lens. Then we have this metaphor of the mechanical coverage of places, people and objects far and near. We have this personification in cambers arrogantly, the zooming camera cambers arrogantly moves, bends, turns left, right arrogantly. This arrogance is attributed to the camera. We have consonants in a town with all four major clearing banks, la sound we have, then ra sound we have in consonants. Then we have alliteration and consonants in pushing for promotion, push and pro that is pa is alliteration and sha is consonants. We have again alliteration and consonants in hemisphere and hammering, ha and ma. Then we have this alliteration and consonants in smaller and smoother, sa, ma. Then we have alliteration in billiard, ball, but and then stop me in the street. We also have alliteration consonant assonance in so small and so very smooth. No wonder we have so many alliterations and assonances because Simon Armitage is a poet who reads Middle English and he claims and many others have said Yorkshire language dialect is close to Middle English. Let us see the rhyme, rhythm and meter in this poem. This is a free verse poem and so we do not have much rhyme, but we have conversational and casual rhythm that is found in iambic, trochic and anapestic or dactylic rhythms. We have polymetrical system in this uh, poem because many metrical patterns are found because of the various line lengths. We have cesura and enjambment in the passage that we have quoted. It begins as a house and end terrace in this case, but it will not stop there, soon it is an avenue. We have given the examples for this, anapest as a house, I am an end, dactyl soon it is trochee terrace. Let us see the overall impression. Zoom is Armitage's poetic vision of the late 20th century. It shows a trip through the commercial town to a galaxy with a black hole and then drops us down in a queue at a supermarket, the center of our consumerist culture today. The telescopic view curves along arrogantly indicating a class divided insight into the society of our times. While the view turns left, it leaves out the mechanics institute, but marks banks, a daily newspaper and a football team. The key word oblivious comments on how all our national and global boundaries get out of hands. The reality is that we are back at the supermarket 
consuming and being consumed by market forces. Ordinary people do not believe the poet's explanations, but this is what the poet can give. Let us move on to the second poem, the shout that we have chosen for our discussion. We have omitted some lines from this poem. We went out into the schoolyard together, me and the boy whose name and face I do not remember. We were testing the range of the human voice. This is a very interesting poem about the human voice, how much we can shout, how much of distance somebody can hear us. The speaker then describes a test of one boy shouting and another boy raising his hand to respond that he has heard the voice. It is actually based on his own school experience when they conducted some kind of scientific experiment about the distance to which our voice can be heard. The testing of shouting and responding continues as much as they can, but the speaker extends the test beyond time and space revealing the voice of the past. Let us continue the poem. He left town, went on to be 20 years dead with a gunshot hole in roof of mouth in western Australia. Boy with the name and face, I do not remember, you can stop shouting now, I can still hear you. The poet says, I can still hear you. It is more than 20 years now, the boy is not here in England, he went to western Australia and also committed suicide by shooting himself. But that voice, the poet is able to still hear. Boy with the name and face, I do not remember. We can see some kind of inversion in this, I do not remember the boy with the name and face. But still, nameless boy, faceless boy, whose voice is heard by the poet. It happens to us as well, how many people we remember just through the voices that we had listened to. We have the thematic contrast between poetry and science and technology. The context is scientific experimentation of how much the voice can travel in distance, how much it can be heard. We have silence and speech, past and present, child and adult, remembering and forgetting, how much of voice we can remember or forget, life and death, peace and violence, near and far. We may forget the words of a name and the image of a face, but certain emotional experiences of the past are the veins and bones of our life. We are made up of such emotional experiences from our past. Remember Duffy saying the origin of poetry is childhood. There are a number of poetic devices in this poem, assonance and consonants. We went out, assonance name and face, assonance and consonants in he yelled from the end of the road, then alliteration from the foot of the hill, alliteration again in Fretwell's form, assonance and consonants in he left town, went on to be 20 years dead. It is again a beautiful poem where we have different elements coming together in assonance and consonants. We have again alliteration and hyperbole that is voice from the past. You can stop shouting now, I can still hear you. Even though it is 20 years over, he can still hear that voice. Repetition we find in I do not remember, he repeatedly says that, but he still remembers the voice. Then we have distinct line arrangements in this poem, alteration of long and short lines and the last two lines alone are somewhat similar in length. Let us see the rhyme, rhythm and meter in this poem. This is an irregular verse with a couple of end rhymes. We have face and voice and then we have arm and form. We have common speech rhythm in this poem. The short line consists of 3 to 6 syllables and the long line has 11 syllables. Again, the meter of the poem is polymetrical. Cesura, enjambment and in stop lines we have in the extract quoted here. He left town, went on to be 20 years dead with a gunshot hole in the roof of his mouth in western Australia. We have examples for I am, 
he left spondy town went trucky gunshot then anapest in the roof let's see the overall impression of this poem now the shout is a poignant poem of a childhood memory about a science experiment in school that the boys conducted for testing the range of human voice though the speaker doesn't remember the name and face of the boy who went to australia and shot himself in his mouth and died the poet seems to suffer from some guilty feeling about the boy's voice which he hears even now the time of 20 years and the distance between continents cannot prevent the voice being heard this is an allegorical poem of testing the human voice with full of assonance consonants alliteration and repetition the human voice will be heard will continue to be heard here we have a summary we saw the historical and literary context in which simon armitage wrote his poems we looked into two specific poems zoom and the shout both are very interesting poems they bring in elements of science into these poems one using a camera giving us a macroscopic and microscopic view and another conducting a scientific experiment about the range of human voice we have a quotation from this writer simon armitage this is actually his translation of the death of king arthur this misfortune you find is of your own manufacture this is a beautiful line which has lot of wisdom in it enjoy further let's see the references thank you